Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. And one of the things we were talking about with the morning session, I had some materials that were up here that I needed for the first hour class. That's why it's so um, confined to this area. But one of the things we talked about, if you're going to expand an airport, you just don't put that, you can put it right next to a city because that's the way it is in Sioux Falls. But for the most part, can you put it in the middle of town or build around an airport? Of course, I mean, that may happen somewhere around the world, but you certainly do not want anything like that. That's why airports are probably on the edge of any type of uh, suburban population. So in this case, then, what we see happening is, okay, so if you're going to expand this airport or this air base, maybe, Okay, we're just going with presumption for, for our purposes where these numbers might lead us. Okay, so how much work does this jet possibly do? Well, uh, it's saying for this jet expansion, or for, excuse me, for this base expansion, what is the, they need a length of a runway if the jets release for, I think we said 494 million, 485,000 joules on a 3,800 kilogram plane as the jet will reach a speed of 440 meters per second, okay? Now, that's not right at takeoff, it's just the idea of we want to take these numbers, just see, okay, if it's coming in at going at full speed, which it probably wouldn't if you need to make an emergency landing maybe, but we're, again, just going where the numbers lead us. And then for takeoff, uh, 2.85 seconds earlier, the speed was 110 meters per second, okay? So I think we had mentioned probably for the 33rd time now, you've read the problem. Okay, so what do we know in this problem? Your initial velocity is 110. Okay. Okay, so then what's the question really asking though? Okay, so then a distance or a length, what's the length of that needed runway then? Okay, if these jets are exhibiting this kind of uh, work and or power or anything to that nature. So, I suppose one stipulation would say we're not going to be using the velocity formula because you could say, well, we've got a dis we've got a velocity and we've got a uh, a distance, but this is in accordance with how much work this jet actually does. Okay, so we're looking for a distance, but if it's not in the velocity formula, where else do you see that variable on your formula sheet? Your variable D. Okay, so in your work formula, do we have the work? Yes, we do. Okay. We don't have the force. Need the acceleration. Okay, we had said earlier that we would not be using your velocity formula because we're tying this into how much work this jet actually performs. So yeah, the velocity for formula would not work for this. Okay, so of these, we can't obviously solve for this. You correctly said we can't solve for force because we don't have the acceleration. So the next thing we would do, all right, what does the formula tell you to do? Okay. At the top of your fraction. All right. Which is 440 minus 110. 
So 3.30, I think. So 3.30 divided by 2.85. 115.75. Okay, 115.79 meters per second squared. Okay, so we have our acceleration. So we can just move right up the ladder. Now let's go ahead and find our force, which is mass times acceleration. So 3,500 times the number we just calculated. 3,800. Oh, I said, oh, okay. 115.79, okay. 3,800 over there, that's right. Okay. I think I was looking at that velocity at the same time, and I just happened to write that 5 instead of an 8. Whether you believe that or not, whichever. Okay, so what's our force then? It's going to Okay. So that would be 440,000 and 2. Okay, so that's Newton's now. So then finally, according to our work formula, that's our force times our distance. We know what the work is. That's 4, 9, 4, 4, 8, 5, and 3 zeros. Okay, so then we also have our distance. We're multiplying between them two, so to undo that, we have to divide, which then means our distance would be approximately 14, 18, 18. Yes, and these are big numbers, and it's easy to make a mistake on that. Okay, and that of course is meters. So I think that would be. No, it equals 1,123. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> Which uh, I'm guessing is probably half a mile, I'd be led to believe. I really don't know. That's, well, 3,000 feet. Give or, give or take, just trying to make a quick analogy of that. So I think 3,000 feet is over half a mile since it's, what, 5,280 feet in a mile. So, yeah, it's possible. Although, you might be looking at this and saying, well, how can we determine this from uh, just these numbers? Because we're just looking at the length of a runway. Why are we talking about speeds that are up in, maybe up in the air or or we're, we're taking time to where that plane's going so fast. Again, we are just looking at that distance because of how much work that jet is doing. Lots and lots of force that pushes out. Okay, so part one is just a few general questions, uh, maybe asking about the formulas. And uh, the idea of the handout came up, and I just said, okay, there might have been a little bit of material left, but it's fine. We just didn't quite get through all of it, okay? So look at your vocabulary. Maybe just glance at that handout, because there could be questions on, on their dealing with work and power and then part two is your uh, problem solving, which will be on Wednesday. And then we're uh, getting close to the end of this short week already for some of us. And then next week is an extremely short week. Two days next week. Okay. So anything else moving forward? Seven or eight like questions. Just like these kind of questions like Correct. Can I take one right now? Mm -hmm.